In this video, we're going to discuss the nature of light and the electromagnetic spectrum. Before we discuss the physical details of what light is, let's talk about some common examples of how you use light in your everyday life. Here's a picture of three different types of bananas. You can tell which banana is ripe just by its color. How do you use light to do this? Well, light is coming from the lamps in the room. It's shining on the banana, and it's bouncing back to your eye, and you're actually detecting information about the molecules in that banana peel. You can tell that when it's not ripe, it's kind of this greenish color. When it's ripe, it's yellow. And when it's overripe, it's this kind of brownish black. All of that is due to the interaction of light with the specific molecules in the peel of the banana. It turns out that chemists and physicists use this strategy all the time, where there is a light source that shines onto a sample, and then some of that light makes it to a detector, and we use the light that's made that makes it to the detector to determine what the material is made out of. Now, we're not limited to using the visible spectrum. There's the entire electromagnetic spectrum that we can use to kind of interrogate materials and figure out what they're made out of. As chemists or medical practitioners, we use radio waves in our NMR, our nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer, or um, in a similar way, we use them in an MRI when we image patients. We use microwaves. When we do rotational spectroscopy, we can do that to figure out uh, the identity of molecules in, in uh, interstellar space. We use infrared radiation when we figure out what organic molecules are made out of. Um, when you do infrared spectroscopy, we use ultraviolet and visible often for absorption and fluorescent types, type measurements. And we use x-rays to determine what type of elements are present in samples. So we use the entire electromagnetic spectrum to interrogate different parts, uh, different materials. When we think about electromagnetic radiation, it's important to recognize that it has wave properties. So it has a wavelength and or a frequency. Let's look at some of the math behind the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency and the energy of different photons or different components of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's look at light as a wave. Here are two wave functions where I've graphed the amplitude of the wave as a function of distance. Notice that one has a short wavelength or a short distance between two peaks or two troughs, and the other has a longer wavelength or distance between peaks and troughs. Here I'm using the symbol lambda to represent wavelength, and it has units of distance. Electromagnetic radiation is an oscillation of the electromagnetic field both in space and in time. So we can plot the wave function as the amplitude of the wave as a function of time. Here are two wave functions, one with a short period and one with a long period. We most often uh, discuss the frequency of an electromagnetic wave. The frequency is equal to the reciprocal of the period. Looking at the wave functions that are plotted above, we can see that if the wavelength is long, it corresponds to a low frequency. Conversely, a short wavelength corresponds to a high frequency. This indicates that there must be some mathematical relationship between frequency and wavelength. That mathematical relationship is that the frequency is equal to the speed of the wave divided by the wavelength. Because we're talking about light, 
there's a constant speed in a vacuum, uh, we give that the symbol C, and that's 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Let's use the equation we just learned to calculate the frequency of 508 nanometer light. 508 nanometer light is in the visible region, and that would look kind of um, green to your eye. The 500 nanometer value is the wavelength. So we're given the wavelength and we're asked to convert it to frequency. We need to do some unit conversions because the speed of light is given as uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we should convert the nanometers to meters and then plug it into the equation. Our final answer is 5.91 times 10 to the 14 per second is the way to read that, or per second is actually equal to hertz. So we'd probably say 5.91 times 10 to the 14 hertz. We can also calculate the energy of an individual photon. Now, when I say photon, what I mean is a discrete individual packet of light. So as you think about electromagnetic radiation, don't think of it so much as waves in the ocean, kind of a continuous wave. Think of it as small, discrete packets of objects that have wave-like properties. The way we calculate the energy of any one of those individual photons is the energy is equal to H, which is Planck's constant, times the frequency. Another way to write that using the expression we had before is Planck's constant times C divided by the wavelength. Planck's constant has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. What's interesting about this equation is that it says the energy is proportional to the frequency Usually, when you think about a wave, like a wave in the ocean, you would think about the energy being proportional to the amplitude, the height of the wave. That is not the case when we think about photons. The energy of the waves of a f in, in the case of photons is proportional to its frequency. Look at these three wave functions. A, B, and C, and determine which has the highest energy. Notice A has the longest wavelength, the lowest frequency, and therefore it must have the lowest energy. It's actually the most red uh, shifted in if it was in the visible spectrum. C, on the other hand, has the shortest wavelength, the highest frequency, and therefore has the highest energy, and it would be on the most blue side of the spectrum. Let's use the equation we just learned about to calculate the energy of the 508 nanometer photon we used in the example calculation before. The energy is equal to Planck's constant times the, times the frequency, or is equal to Planck's constant, the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Plugging the values in that we have, we calculate a photon energy of 3.9 times 10 to the 19th joules. Notice that this is the energy per photon. Often in chemistry, we like to think about the energy per mole of photons. So let's convert this to the energy per mole of these photons, and let's also convert it to energy in units of kilojoules per mole. Performing that calculation, we see that the energy per mole is 235 kilojoules per mole of those photons that have a wavelength of 508 nanometers.